welcome back to Indigenous Food Friday, where we gather around and I tape or video, whatever you guys are calling it now. Um, I just share with you what I'm cooking that's indigenous for the day. So while I cook and prep my meal for my family, I share it with you. So today I am going to do, um, I'm going to do a braised rabbit with um, fingerling potatoes. Um, for those of you who don't know, potatoes are indigenous to the Americas and not to um, Ireland. And we're going to do a, a, a mm -hmm, roasted acorn squash and delicate squash. If you've never tried delicate squash, you should. It's almost like a butternut squash, but way creamier. Um, and it is a little bit more delicate. So it's really good to do like broiled in the oven rather than baked for a long time. Um, but first, we need to start with the rabbit. Okay, so I've already cut up my rabbit. Um, if you don't hunt for rabbits uh, or you don't raise rabbits, you can buy them online. I'll, I'll see what I can find and drop it in um, the description box below. Um, but this is just, you know, I think it's, I don't even want to know what kind of rabbit it was to tell you the truth. Um, but I've cut it up so we've got our legs and hindquarters. This is the tailbone. Um, this is the neck and rib cage, and then this is the body. I've had it soaking in some salt water and lemon juice to just to pull out the gamey flavor. Some people will soak it in like buttermilk, and that's fine too, um, but I try to stay as, dig as indigenous as I can. So I've got a pan heating with some sunflower oil. We're gonna add some salt and pepper. Okay, I'm putting on my apron so that I don't get grease all over my clothes. Um, I've also got the oven preheating at 375. Um, because we're going to brown both edges of the rabbit and then we're going to put it into a casserole dish and then put it into the oven. If you have a big enough cast iron skillet, that works even better, but I don't, um, where you can brown it right into the skillet and then put it right into the oven. Um, but we are just going to use my regular skillet, put it into a casserole dish, pop it into oven. You want to give yourself about 50 minutes to an hour to braise your rabbit in the oven. So now we're gonna go ahead and just add these. And if, I'll wait to top. If you need to do this in batches, do it in batches, that's totally fine. Now there isn't much meat on the tailbone, but I'm gonna add it anyway, um, because it will add to the flavor. Same with the, the rib cage and the neck. Okay. And you can see they're just beautifully golden brown. Go ahead and turn that when it's that beautiful golden color. Okay, so these are done. I'm going to go ahead and put them in, if I can pick it up, my casserole dish. Rip right down. And it's okay if you kind of, if they're kind of smooshed in there. Um, because we're going to cook it all together anyway. So now go to the legs and the hind quarters. Now this is where your best meat is, so you'll want to make sure it's seasoned well and that you get it in there very nicely and watch it so that you don't burn it. Oh, my house already smells so good. Okay, we'll let it brown, then we'll flip it. I'll be right back. Okay, these are ready to turn. And you know, in between, when you're waiting for these to brown up, you can be prepping your vegetables, um, washing dishes. I always clean as I go, so when it's time to plate up, I really don't have many dishes to do afterwards at all. Okay. So a couple more minutes on that side until they're nice and golden, and then we'll put them all in the casserole dish. Okay. So now I'm going to take the legs and hind quarters out and get that into the pan or the dish. 
whatever it is you're using. And it doesn't have to look gorgeous right now. You just want it to look gorgeous when you plate it up. So whatever makes it fit ever so nicely in your dish to make it work. Okay, I think I'm gonna move this over here and that over. That's better. And then, oh, maybe that guy wants to go there. That works. Okay. okay, so now we've got our rabbit in our casserole dish, or you can be using your cast iron skillet, whatever works for you. I'm going to put in a couple sprigs of rosemary and a couple sprigs of sage. Let's break this up a little bit. Probably just, we don't want it too overwhelming. But the sage and the rosemary go really, really well with the rabbit. It just brings all of the flavors together. There, I think that's great. I'm gonna put just a little bit more pepper. You don't have to, but I enjoy a lot of pepper. A pinch of salt. Now, um, this is dried sumac berries that have been crushed. It will add like a citrusy flavor, almost like if you married a lemon and paprika together. That's what you get with dried sumac. Now you can gather it on your own. Make sure it's the red berries, not the white ones. The white ones will probably kill you. So the red berries, or you can buy it online or from your local health food store. Now I've got about a half a cup of water. Well, actually a little bit below that. I put in two tablespoons of my fire cider and then fill the rest of the water to equal one half a cup. If you don't have fire cider, you can um, put in um, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, fill it up so that you have a half a cup of water, and then add just like a sprinkling of cayenne pepper or um, turmeric or whatever spices you would like. Um, but the fire cider is really gonna give it that kick and spice and flavor. Um, but this works well as a substitute. And we're just gonna pour that in over everything. Beautiful. Now before I put it in the oven, I just ran outside and pulled up one of my leeks. Um, I decided it would taste really good with a leek. So I've cut it up, washed it really, really well. Um, this is two leeks, so I'm just gonna put, you can also use wild onions or shallots if you don't have leeks or just an onion, whatever. I mean, there's no really rules to indigenous cooking. You use what you have um, the best way that you can. Now, I'm not gonna put all the leeks in here um, because I'm gonna reserve some for the vegetable dish, for our roasted vegetables. So, about that much. Okay, now we're going to cover it up with some foil. And we're gonna let this baste in the oven at 375 degrees for 50 to 60 minutes. Now we're going to prepare um, the vegetables that we're going to roast while um, our rabbit is basting. So here I just have the acorn squash. I'm gonna cut it in half. My um, son is upstairs playing games, so if you hear him hooting and hollering, that's just him. Um, we have chickens and guinea fowl, so, um, and it's always a good practice to not um, just throw all of this organic stuff into the garbage. You can preserve the seeds. I feed them to our goats and chickens and guinea fowl, um, or if you've got a compost bin, that way it goes back to the earth instead of, you know, a garbage pit somewhere. So we're just gonna clean these out. I'm just gonna slice them. What would our kids these days do without video games? 
he's all done with school already, so that's what he's up to. Not all the time. He gets about 45 minutes a day to play. Now, um, if you want to, you can peel um, the squash so that it's all neat and nice and you don't have to worry about it after. I don't. Um, I'm gonna leave that on there. When we eat them, we just eat them from the skin. And then of course the skin will go into um, feed the chickens. Now here's our delicate squash. We're gonna cut this down the middle. Kind of the same, the same prep. Okay, you can see on the delicate squash, there isn't a whole lot there. So you can, you can see like if you were to bake this or boil it, it's really gonna just fall apart. So we're gonna take these seeds out, just like we did, like you would any other squash or fruit. And clean that out. And there was a very nice gentleman, I guess one of my um, my followers, who sent me the most beautiful thank you card letter. It was a handwritten letter, um, full page, thanking me for my content, and um, which was just brought me to tears. I started doing this so that my kids could have recipes because I never write anything down. Um, and I remembered after my mom passed away, I didn't have, I, I didn't pay enough attention. She passed away when I was 35. And you know, we think our parents and loved ones are gonna live forever. And I just didn't pay enough attention. Um, and then of course, for the last oh, couple of years of her life, she didn't cook anymore. So I really missed that opportunity. And there's so many times where I'm like, man, I wish I could have, you know mom's chicken and dumplings or mom what does she put in her vegetable stew to make it taste like that and trying to figure it out um so i didn't want that for my kids and actually my daughter asked me to start writing things down and then i found the magic of youtube and blogging and i thought that makes it so much easier because most of the time when i'm cooking i'm just going out like what i have um available and you know throw it all together somehow so it's usually never the same thing. So I started making the YouTube videos and, and the blog um, for my kids and it just, it's grown from there. So I'm really happy and I feel blessed that other people are taking enjoyment in this and I feel really blessed and honored. So to get a letter was like, it really brought tears to my, to my, my heart and my soul. And, um, because I, you know, you, everyone searches for that purpose, you know? Okay. So for the delicate squash, I'm going to slice, what would that be? This is length width, the width wise. <laughs> that makes sense. Focus Jody. So we're just, clearly I need to sharpen my knives. So just like that for the delicate squash. I'm really excited for you guys to try this out and let me know what you think. Anyway, so he sent me um, the thank you letter and that was enough right there. But then he also sent me some heirloom seeds that he had basically propagated himself. And it's a mixture of delicate squash and butternut squash. He sent me some seeds and that brought me even more to tears. So I have them growing and they're sprouting right now and I cannot wait to try them. It, I am so grateful for it. I, I couldn't have asked for anything like that and that was just incredible. Anyway, let's focus. Okay, so now I'm just spreading these out onto a baking sheet. I'm gonna add those fingerling potatoes the rest of those leeks or wild onions or shallots, whatever you have. Okay, now I'm going to add some more of that sunflower oil. Try to have enough so that everything is coated real nice. And then we'll, we'll toss it around with our hands here in a minute. 
but you want everything nice and coated. And the good thing about sunflower oil is it is triglyceride and cholesterol friendly. So if you're watching your cholesterol and or triglycerides, sunflower oil is good. Plus it has a high smoke point. Um, so you can, if you need to fry something, sunflower oil is, is a good way to go. We're gonna add some pepper. If you don't like pepper, you don't have to use pepper. Um, my mom, I mean, I use quite a bit of pepper, but my goodness, my mom put tons of pepper on everything. And this is some um, sea salt. And then I'm gonna add, this is some finely crushed sage, dried sage. Give it that nice earthy flavor. Now, if you don't like sage, or I've heard some people are allergic to sage, just omit it. Um, put in whatever, like I really think that our bodies will tell us what we need and what will be good. Just listen to your bodies. It will tell you rosemary would good, go great with this, some thyme, a little bit of garlic, you know, whatever, whatever sounds good to you, um, just throw it in. It's just food, you know, do some experiments. And as usual, with roasted vegetables, well, with so many, I mean, how many recipes have I done where I add in uh, good old maple syrup? We're going to add some gorgeous pure maple syrup. Not a lot, just enough to kind of add and bring out the caramelization of the onions, the leeks, and the squash. So not a lot, just a drizzle. Now we're just gonna toss this. So that everything is nicely coated with the oil and the seasonings. Go ahead and get your hands in there to make sure everything is coated. Of course, make sure your hands are nice and clean. But you want everything nicely coated so that it will brown and roast beautifully. And I just find the best way to do that is with my hands. If you want to be kind of bougie, you can like put it all in a big mixing bowl and toss it. That works too. Um, but that just gives me another pan to wash. So I just do it this way. Okay, that looks beautiful. Now you might need to, depending on how long it takes you to prepare these, the veggies, you might need to wait to put them in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in there. We're going to bake them at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, but keep an eye on them um, in case they need to be turned. I'll probably turn these about 20 minutes in. So just keep an eye on them. Okay, these will go in the oven. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, the colors are just spectacular that all laid out. Beautiful. Okay, in the oven. Okay, look how gorgeous this looks. I wish you could smell it. Mmm, so good. So I'm gonna plate up the vegetables while we just let this rest a few minutes. It really won't take long. It's like, um, a lot like chicken, it doesn't need a long time to rest like you know, like steaks or pork do. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plate up those vegetables. Okay, so here I've plated up the gorgeous um, squash and the delicate squash. So you can see why it gets its name delicate squash. So be very careful with it. You can eat the skin, it's not a problem. Whatever you prefer. And then we'll just plate up our beautiful rabbit. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Let's plate it up like that. Now some of, um, I guess you'd, it would be rabbit stock that's left in the pan or in the casserole dish. I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle that over the top of the rabbit. A couple leeks in there. There you are. Doesn't that look gorgeous? So here you are. <laughs> Enjoy.